Hello and welcome to the tutorial. My name is Robert Joyner. In this tutorial, I will discuss seascapes, give you some tips on how to create a colorful painting, some uh, ideas on how to balance your abstract and representational qualities, um, how to um, you know, use your initial wash and rotate it until you find you know, some interesting shapes and um, also we want to create a loose sketch prior to painting. Um, this will help us uh, lay out our composition and also will give us a little more freedom actually to uh, paint more expressively as we go. And a few other tips for creating reflections and some um, other uh, details that go along with seascapes. The materials I'm using will be the 500 series Strathmore Premium Artboard. A fantastic durable mixed media surface acrylic paint you can see my palette below and again you don't necessarily have to use this palette uh, these are colors that I have you know used in the past and I'm comfortable with I like them and but feel free to experiment uh, and use the colors that um, excite you uh, a variety of synthetic brushes again the list is below and a spray bottle now I have used a spray bottle to pre-wet the paper. So the, the board is damp and then I'm, I'm gonna start with a very colorful wash. Um, so right away I'm infusing some rich deep colors and um, before I add layers to this wash, I want to allow it to dry. And that's very important because it's easy when you start painting to get excited and just start adding layer over layer over layer and you end up with a bunch of muddy colors. So uh, once these three colors are in, I'm using blue, yellow, and magenta. I will allow this to completely dry. And take note that most of the blue is towards the top, the yellow's bottom left, and then I have some magenta to the lower right. And because um, I'm going to rotate and, and flip that around a little bit once it's dry to find uh, shapes and abstract qualities that I want to use. So um, again, we want to allow this underpainting to dry. And then once it's dry, I'll put it on the easel and I'm gonna rotate it, you know, four different ways um, to, and I know I want to paint a seascape, but I'm gonna try to use that wash for, um, you know, um, and I'll, I'm looking for you know, certain colors. I'm looking for an interesting blend of colors in an area. So we can see now that I've completely flipped that from the original layout 180 degrees. So that is um, that's, uh, basically upside down compared to my initial wash. So, um, and, and the reason why is because I knew I would have the boats to the top and then um, and I also could see some light and dark areas already forming um, with the color colors that were given to me from the underpainting. So I wanted to exploit that at the same time. You know, we, we want to use that underpainting wisely. And um, so, so again, just experiment with that. So put your wash down, get nice and free with it. Don't try to control the wash. And then once you have it on, just uh, rotate it around until you, you, know, you feel like you find, you have discovered something interesting or nice combination that you want to incorporate uh, in your piece. Now I'm obviously, obviously, uh, excuse me, using a, a liner brush to put my initial sketch in. Um, this is just something uh, I do once in a while. I don't often put a sketch in, but sometimes a sketch for you know, especially a complicated or complex composition is nice. So you can kind of get the idea um, down first. And then once you get your idea down, then sometimes, you know, that sometimes that will give you the freedom to paint more freely. Um, so I'm, I'm using the liner brush there just to add some loose gestural strokes there for the three boats I'll be painting. Now I'm going to go ahead and move forward here. I didn't allow that underpainting to dry. I'm just going to go ahead and start adding some color over that. Um, whenever you're starting to paint color um, and paint your subjects, try not to overpaint it. Just put the put your strokes down and leave them alone. Um, a lot of times, you know, if you go back and you start pushing your paint around and uh, painting it and moving it more, and you know, you're getting a little bit fussy with it. 
then then it's going to start you're going to start your colors will start to become very flat and your strokes become very flat um you know if you want to create exciting um abstract brushwork and, and artwork then allow that you know allow your your painting you know, just put your strokes down and, and leave it alone and um and i think you'll find that your your representational qualities will be there but then the abstract qualities will be there too so it doesn't necessarily have to be perfect. I mean, we're not trying to create a picture perfect um, piece of artwork here, or at least that's never my goal. I, I want to get the gist down, and but allow enough uh, room for the viewer to, um, you know, kind of use their imagination a little bit. And uh, and to me, that that creates a little bit, uh, you know, better artwork, you know, in the final um, in the final finish as well. So. Uh, so now I'm just adding some color uh, to the boats and I want to drag some of that color down into the water area. So I'm, I'm pulling some of that blue and purple down. I'm pulling some of the green down. And um, and, and that creates a, a nice uh, soft uh, transition and a nice soft reflection. So if, uh, if I completely use a different shade of blue or purple or green, then a lot of times it will be a very stiff transition. I'm um, very noticeable. So my, my idea is just to make it a very soft reflection, you know, try to avoid you know, really hard lines. All right, so now I've let all of that dry. So at that point, I've added a little bit of reflection, a little bit of boat color, and I've let those layers completely dry. And now I want to come back and, and work with the water and the reflections a little bit more. So by, by allowing, letting that dry, I can now come back and, and pre- or, or miss the paper again and um, especially the water area where I'll be painting and it's going to create some nice soft strokes so my strokes won't be as stiff the edges won't be as stiff so it will create kind of a combination of, of, of soft and a few hard edges so um, that's a nice tip too because uh, again I mean it's all about keeping your colors and your brush strokes nice and fresh so you have hard edges, you have soft edges, and your colors are nice and crisp, and, and that's what we want in a painting. Um, and, and especially in this particular demo where I want to create a very vibrant and colorful piece of art. And, and, and the color and actually plays a significant role too. So it, it's uh, you know, their boats, but also it's that color that I want to become a, a key role in the piece. So um, and I want to maintain that throughout. So you can see I've added some reflections. Um, I, I like to paint a lot with my liner brush. Um, you can really put a lot of paint on this. And you can uh, make some nice long marks. So I, I use that quite a bit uh, when I'm painting. And um, so I'm just basically adding some details. The light source is coming in from the left. So the, dark, the right sides are a little bit darker on the boats and you know, in the wheelhouse areas. So um, I'm just trying to focus on the wheelhouse area there. So I'm adding some nice light tones. And now I've got a little bit of a, like a purple gray. And I'm just adding uh, touches of that to balance out some of the, the white brush strokes. And that's really what I do when I'm painting. I'm constantly balancing. So if I add some abstract qualities, I want to come back and add some representational qualities. If I add some nice, you know, bright white, I want to come back with some, you know, purple or, or gray whites or, you know, purple whites to balance out the pure white. So, you know, it, it's a constant balance of uh, color and a constant balance of abstract and representational qualities going on. Um, and again, I'm going to stress this point, the underpainting, I want to allow uh, to show through parts of it in the final painting. It, it would have been useless to paint the underpainting and then completely paint over it. You may as well have not done that at all. So I want, as I'm adding water and reflections, uh, I want to make sure I, I kind of hit and miss and allow some of that underpainting to come through so that my efforts uh, aren't voided and that some of those original colors uh, become part of the finished painting. So I'm, I'm very conscious of this as I'm painting, but um, and as, as you kind of work with this, just make sure you don't uh, overpaint uh, your underpainting and, uh, 
and you know, allow some of those nice rich colors to be a part of your, your final piece. I'm just starting with some kind of um, some lighter water tones there. Um, I mean, this particular color it certainly wasn't in the, uh, the reference photo. And I'm not showing the reference photo because I don't, I don't want you to get too caught up with the subject I'm painting. I want you to pay attention more to how I'm painting versus what I'm painting. Um, so I don't really put that in, in there just because once I start painting anyway, um, that, you know, the, the image just gives me a means to start painting. And then once I start going, I really look at, refer to a photo anyway. So now I'm just adding some, a little bit richer, uh, blue. So I've started lighter, work some medium tones in. So now I have, uh, two, uh, varieties of, of, of water, uh, tones and colors going on. Um, I like to use three in my water, so I have like a light, medium, and a darker um, color for my water, and that creates uh, you know a little more interest than using just one or maybe two colors. I also like to use broad areas, so I use uh, some larger broad strokes, and then I use some medium strokes, and then I use some nice choppy strokes as well, just to kind of you know give a, a nice mixture of. Um, of reflections and watercolor so uh you know again i would recommend uh just you know i'll always use a combination and a variety of brush strokes in your work and uh experiment as much as you can with that and brush brush strokes and brush work is a big part of my work uh painting and uh so i'm constantly um you know just kind of mixing it up a little bit so now i'm just using a liner brush and i'm just adding some bits and pieces of darker tone Again, I don't want to overpaint this. We don't want to go take it too far. So, um, you know, it's just nice and loose and um, and, and free and, and it's colorful and, you know, everything is there. You can see the underpainting. You can see the boats. You can get the feel of water. And that's fine. That's, that's, that's really all I'm after in this painting. I don't want to you know, think or go too much um, and overpaint it. And then you end up ruining uh, a nice fresh painting so anyway I'm just going to zoom in uh, here or actually I'm, I'm coming out but um, zooming out a little bit just to show you some of the brush work here's the final piece uh, taken with natural light so you can kind of see a lot of the the reflections and er all the tips that I talked about in this final piece um, I, I think I you know, was successful in creating, you know, what I intended to, to, to begin with. So, um, anyway, that, that's a few tips for you for painting seascapes. Um, I gave you some other ideas on, on painting in general. I hope you enjoy, enjoyed the uh, tutorial. I uh, enjoyed making it for you and I look forward to seeing what you do on your own. So thanks again for watching and I look forward to talking to you with you in the forums.